Hey everybody, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky and joining me for this episode is Amanda. Hi Amanda. Hi Becky. And Leah. Hey Leah. Hi. And Jenny. Hi Jenny. Hey Becky. And Heather. Hey Heather. Hello. Um, Michael says I'm making his life more difficult because there are now five of us. You're welcome, oh. Michael. I know, right? Sorry, Mike. We got to uh, keep you on your toes, Mike Burrier. But we all needed to do this to talk about this book, though, don't you think? Yeah. I agree. We yeah. all needed to be here to talk about this one in particular? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. So this is the first one of July. You can find the list of all the books we're reading for July and now for August available on our website. Um, but for this book club style discussion, we're diving in to discuss When I Had You by S.L. Scott. Okay, of us sitting here, how many of us was this our first S.L. Scott book? Me. 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 Oh, awesome. Oh, all of us. It's all all of, us. of us. So she is That's a impressive. new to us author. Um, it doesn't happen very often that at least one of us okay. hasn't read something. It doesn't. <laughs> Mark this down in the record books. For right. Like no. in. Take notes. Um, okay. So who has their doc open? Does anybody have their I doc? Do. I do. I can, I can read Heather, it. Well, let I Heather, actually... you got to do it all the time. Let Heather do it now. Okay. Oh, okay. Heather, tell us all the things we need to know about this book. Okay. Um, first, the release date was May 1st, 2024. The tropes are uh, sports romance, race car, single dad, forbidden, like boss employee, close proximity, grumpy sunshine, anything else? No, I think I guess it's billionaire romance because she technically is a billionaire. It's hidden too because like they don't, nobody knows that they're dating. Like secret relationship kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, Like because they were outed, but then like as they were dating, like seeing each other, nobody knew about it. Right. And it's it's not really Hollywood norm because they're both famous. Right. Yeah. So famous, famous. Yeah, like kind of Hollywood or celebrity. Celebrity. Like they're celebrity in their own rights, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, keep going, Heather. It's a standalone. It is dual first person. Uh, put out percentage or pop is 48. I had 50, so that's okay. 48, between 48 and 50. Same difference, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the audiobook narrators <laughs> were CJ Bloom and sebastian york did you do the audio heather uh yes same (laughs) and it didn't need sped up this is the first audio that i've done for sip and discuss that i didn't have to like speed it up this Mm -mm. was like music i like their voices together like they They, blend very well together i would agree they do a really great job together uh their deck breakup yes um it is available on kindle unlimited and audible Okay, so we said the audiobook was Sebastian York and CJ Bloom. And real quick, the performance on this one was phenomenal. This is the first audiobook I've listened to in a little bit that there weren't audio quality issues, like there weren't change in volumes, um, mm-hmm. there weren't any missteps, or, or it couldn't hear any clicking or anything. It was a very well done audiobook. I would agree. Um, and plus, it was the unicorn, mm-hmm. Sebastian York. I really like I mean, CJ Bloom too. Like I personally, agree. I didn't listen to the audiobook, but like I really enjoy listening yeah. to her. They do a really great job together. So we recently learned, and this is very interesting, that um, narrator Sebastian York does not narrate anyone under the age of 30. If the character is supposed to be under 30, he is not comfortable narrating them anymore because obviously he's a little bit older. He's been around a minute. And that made me realize that Cash is like, over 30. <laughs> yeah, he's 35. What did he say? 36. 35. 35. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's, 20. she's 26. Oh, yeah. yeah. So age gap. We left age gap off the list yeah. of oh. Oh. tropes. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'll put it on there. He likes it. doesn't feel age. like an age gap. Though. Yeah, it's not important to the story for no. them. And it didn't feel icky. No. No. Well, but it didn't feel like, honestly, like maturity wise, like they were in the same level like i didn't feel like there was any differential to like the fact that there was an age difference like sometimes like 10 years can seem like a lot but also since they were like older it didn't feel age gappy yeah 
Well, okay, so let's talk. Let's start with first our hero, Cash Riot. Um, he is dubbed the bad boy of racing, so he's now trying to. He got fired from his past car company that he raced for. Uh-huh. The Westcotts have rehired him or have hired him team. for their yeah, team. Right? Yeah, to uh-huh. lead their team. Um, and he is like trying to reform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think well, he was like a really big sense. hothead. It sounds like. Yeah. yeah I kind think of... he's just trying to stay out of trouble. Yeah. Well, and like he talks about his past, like how he, when he was with his ex, like they drank a lot, they smoked a lot, like he like partied a lot and was like the news was fairly negative. And so like he doesn't want that persona to be like what people see anymore. And he actually hasn't been like that in the past few years, but it's like he's so stuck with that name that he really is trying to like turn the tables for like his persona. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's a race car driver. Here is a point of contention, and I have to be very honest. You know, we often talk about sports romance and if the sport in the romance is correct. Mm-hmm. I am not a fan of racing. Like, I don't know much. Like, I know more about hockey than I do about racing. Which is not saying a lot. That's not really. Saying I know a lot. more about football than I know about racing, and I think oh, we all know I know how much everything I'm... about well stock car racing, but I know which is very bit. different than what like the type of racing he is doing. Yeah, yeah, but she's very vague. Okay, in her details, but we did some research. <laughs> we do not know what kind of racing this is actually is because they refer to it as P one racing. We did some searching. I found out that P one racing is actually. Principle one racing, it refers to a team management style and yeah. role within Formula One racing, but not a specific type of racing. F1 team principles are responsible for overseeing operation strategy and performance of their prospective teams. But if you just Google what does P1, P1 racing. mean in racing, it tells you that's pole position. Yep. But Leah. <laughs> yeah. But I googled p1 racing and it's boats oh it's, yes. it's like a new tight like new style hey, that I is mean, coming people forth. race boats. it's boats so there's yeah. some crazy but contention and confusion about well yeah i think she just calls us something else so she didn't have to get the details exactly right which is fine mm-hmm. yeah right because like that. yeah we there's like when they talk about the car, it's just worth millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. It's like there's no no like talk about like but, whether it's open wheel or yeah. stock car. Yeah, there wasn't specifics, or, but I will yeah. say when she talked about the training, like how they're not allowed to train in the car, that is true. They do actually train on simulators more often than they do in a car, especially Formula One drivers. Because I did Google that one too. Because I was curious. I also like how, I mean, he's sort of treated, because, I mean, he's an athlete in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. So I really like how he was sort of treated like an athlete, like, you know, his meal plan, his exercise, like all Mm -hmm. the, like his regimen. Well, that is actually reality. Yeah, Yeah. it's hardcore Mm because they get some G-forces. They don't, they're not like driving around with AC cranked up. (laughs) (laughs) They're in huge fire suits. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like every bit of weight matters. Miles an hour. Yeah, the weight, yeah. like the weighing and like that, all that stuff. Like that's so she did get some right, but some maybe not. Or maybe it's just us. So. Well, and so there's some other little pieces of it. Like Formula One is actually raced in Austin, Texas, not Dallas. Um, we don't know the type of racing. We don't know exactly what P1 is referring to. It could be MLP1, which is the endurance styled racing of open wheeled i believe so not open wheel i don't know i, I know think nothing. she's just trying to make it in the race world and make it as you know like but it, this isn't the first book in her race world because so each the of these books is standalone books. Yeah. but she writes in a world because the brothers that are coupled i think there's two brothers that are a couple now no, all four. three 
all no, four all or four three, have, three, yeah. three. Yeah, there's sorry. only three brothers, but all three or of them are, like have relationships. So there's and another books are book. Done. So there are those other books that take place in this world. Oh, so yes. I think it's a little odd that she's not really clear on the racing. If you're gonna, but they're owners though; they're not drivers. Yeah, so, right. so it would so, be a different aspect, and like, yeah, I mean. I'd give it to her because then you can do whatever you want. Like they yep. can go, totally. yeah, yeah, they can go have a race in Antarctica. Like, I mean, he does travel to like places that they do well, have that's, like F1 I mean, races for, too. Yeah. So. Formula One goes all over the place. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, yeah, you have to kind of take it with a open mind a little bit. Um, so I think there's four books total in yeah. this Westcott like racing series. Yeah. Um, and the all one, the covers look very similar. Stacy says, I know the one is a lawyer. Technically. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's. But he's locked. like, he. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did like their names, though, and how they're all like, too. maritime names. They're all, yeah. So our heroine's name, she is Marina Westcott. Mm-hmm. Except um, for Noah. Poor Noah. Noah, he doesn't have mm-hmm. a water name. It's a stretch. It, 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 yeah, it's a stretch. <laughs> and I liked in the little bit of the epilogue in the end where she's like needling at him about it. Oh, oh they're also, gonna name their baby. Yeah, yeah. But I do like though, like where she's like Noah, like it fits him. Like had he had a maritime name, it probably wouldn't have fit him as well. I am like intrigued by the brothers and the relationships that like with the sister in laws that they have because mm-hmm. they seem very like intense in their love. I will say this was a very character-driven romance, and I did mm-hmm. like that because I do think that we definitely got Cash's emotions. I wanted more emotions from Marina. Yeah. I felt like there were times that I would have liked some introspect from her or a conversation more heart-to-heart with Poppy, the best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. But we are getting a poppy book, so yeah, that's the next book. It comes out next month. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Heather's like, tell me more. I'm on. And he's, I'm, I'm, he's the guy. I think it's with the guy that she meets. It's the rock, like the star. rock star, right? Rock star. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be rock star. But, but it's amnesia too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Which I'm bad. always intrigued by an amnesia book because you never like it's hard to do. Well. It is hard. So like I've read a couple and I'm like, oh man, this one did not work. But I've read a couple where I'm like, ooh, I really like the way they did this here. Um, I do think Marina was a very smart character. Like mm-hmm. I liked her. I didn't have any moments where I'm like, oh God, she's a little too stupid to live. However, I because I started the book first, which is what typically happens around here. And I actually had a moment of panic after I read the first two chapters. Mm-hmm. I was like, this dude's an asshole. Jenny and Amanda are not going to like this. Like, I felt like you needed content trigger warnings for Cash alone because I'm like, oh, he's an ass. And she's like, Leah, you're going to love him. Yeah. I mean, Leah got the text of, oh, my God, you're going to love him. He's your kind of hero. But I I got the warning text. (laughs) But I but I will say, like, Cash's assholeness, it was all situational. Like, I think with him, like, he's just been in this bubble almost where people like want something from him and he's been burned so bad that he just he doesn't want to people anymore and he wants to just protect those who are like who he cares about and so it's like he just plays the asshole card I was busy with my highlighting tool in the old Kindle and I just (laughs) feel like this really needs to be read out loud I'm the bad boy every good girl wants to take for a spin. I have money, looks, and I don't have their parents' approval. I'm a wet dream for every goody two-shoes. I was like, yeah. oh my God, what an arrogant jerk. Yeah, he does not lack for ego. <laughs> that was in he my notes. Not. Arrogance, well, arrogance, and, arrogance. But also the fact, like, when they meet, like, he has never met her. Like, her family owns the oh, racing, yeah. like, company. 
she's on her phone. He basically body checks her because she's not looking at him. And he's pissed off because his yeah. like ego is showing and gets dinged that how dare this woman be in here and not pay attention to me. Well, and he breaks but, oh, her phone. He breaks her phone. But <laughs> and she, it comes like, back to bite him. I, yeah, aggressively, which is amazing. But she lets loose, and then when the brother walks in, he's like, "Oh, have you met our sister?" And he's like, "Oh fuck, yeah, she's an owner." Yeah, it's like karma's a bitch, dude. Um, I do, I do have to say that like Marina, while I think she lacked depth, she wasn't too stupid to live, and she made some smart choices, mm -hmm. like yes. you know, um. And she didn't let Cash get away with things either, right? Like right. that first yeah. dinner where he shows up and sits down next to her, she's just like slinging it at him. Mm -hmm. I think part of that, though, is she's sheltered in a sense where her brothers were like always protecting her. And so like now that she is out like on her own and has to stand on her own two feet without them hovering like she has really grown a backbone for herself. Like she doesn't use it so much with her family until like farther into the story, but like she has no f like qualms, like defending herself and like, like knowing like, this is my worth. Like this is like who I am. And I'm glad that by the end of the book, like she was capable of standing up to her brothers as well. Yeah. Cause you don't always get that. I do think that this would have been a better story for her if we hadn't had the boyfriend sleeping with the um Costume the costumer. Yeah. It wasn't needed. Like they could have no. been no. paparazzi fodder just for the fact that she's a starlet and an owner and they're mm -hmm. caught and seen together. Like cuz the agent piece, the fact that she finally did stand up to the brothers but she didn't stand up to that agent and demand she show up. And then, you well, know, until she fired her. Yeah. yeah. And well, it was just, yeah, it was like, it was quick, very like, like anticlimactic. Oh, yeah. I just <laughs> think if we had taken out that the boyfriend or co-star yeah. piece, I think I actually probably would have liked her better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think too, there was, um, cause they bill it as an enemies to lovers on Amazon. And it just like, I felt like they were trying to, the author, you know, I felt like it was like almost like a forced enemies to lovers, but they yeah. weren't. So I felt like some of the back and forth was just, the, it wasn't needed. The switch well, it just, on enemies to lovers this. here just switched off. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. by chapter three, they are not enemies anymore. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. And I would just like, I would call that banter, right? Like, I mean, yeah. we all have those people in our lives that we talk to like that. At least yeah. I do. Maybe yeah. I'm the asshole. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I got like six asshole. of you right there. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I am yeah, the asshole. Well, so. And I think that that's the thing. Like they just have like this natural like competitive edge with each other almost. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. Stacey says annoyance to lovers is what it felt like to her. That's a better way to put it. I don't like enemies to lovers, so it never even really not until I read Unless that. it's Was mafia, like, oh. then she likes enemies to lovers. Correct. Well, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, that's that's like PNR. It's different when it's PNR. I can't let that go, Heather. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't even count. count. <laughs> um, okay, so, and we've talked about Cash. He was so arrogant and such a jerk. And before we started, I brought up a thought and I'm curious what all of you think including those in the chat or those listening I'd love to hear your feedback I think that it was imperative in this story that Cash be a single dad that we get to see his softer side his humanity with his little guy Ryan versus Cullen. what Cullen. Cullen it was Cullen yeah. his last Cullen. name is she called Ryan. him Ryan because she got his oh. like purposely called him something wrong so Cullen. it's Cullen okay Sorry. No, I it's okay. I don't know. I wrote down Ryan. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is sad. I anyway. did also write down Turpity, which I do not like oh, that name. And it was the I mean, perfect name for her. I don't I don't Google names I can't pronounce and I'm like, Google doesn't even recognize this. What the heck? Uh, that's audiobook. Same thing. 
The audiobook <laughs> saved me. It's the only reason I can say it. Oh, Thank Terpity. you. <laughs> Terpity. We were supposed to hate her. That's why she has a terrible name. It is well, a really horrible and name. Her, but don't, don't hate, hate her, her by the end. end. Her, and, but don't you think her evolution was kind of quick? Yes. Yeah. Therapy don't work like that. Like one week, <laughs> two weeks in Spain yeah. for a model shoot and a couple of phone calls to a therapist and all of a sudden you don't hate your ex? You're not like a... You're not a selfish hag anymore. Yeah, right. And you stopped drinking. And she just stopped drinking. Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. it was the alcohol. Maybe, maybe it was the it was alcohol. The um, I will say there, like, that's the thing with this book that I didn't really care for is like, we like, she built up this like idea of the character and then it was like a downward slope it's like you hit the top on the ski lift and then you just went down it's like there was no like there was the build up but then it was you were let down with like the way that the characters grew yeah okay so back just to with the quickness yeah mm -hmm. sorry yeah. well yeah. i think lots of things with this book were very quick like yeah. yeah and i will also say and i was gonna bring this up in a little bit but i'll say it now this writing style was a little jarring um, well, there's no transitions. Yeah. Like, there is no natural. So I told Leah, I told Leah right off. I said, listen, one minute they're in the car and the next minute they're in the living room. I don't know how they got out of the car. And she's like, well, it's because you're listening to the audio book. No, I asked you maybe you there's a space the in the book. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. But there's not. Like, there's, there's not. no break in the, the ebook. Well, because sometimes in audio, those like, Right, the breaks and right. the chapters don't translate. So I asked you if you're doing the audio, and that's why I was like, "Oh, maybe that was the problem." But it was not because no joke, like they like were basically gonna bang out, but then they ended up sleeping together, and then she's having lunch with Poppy. In the well, next sentence, I was like, like in, across happened? the country, like in Vancouver, from yeah. Miami to Vancouver. Yeah. Like, right? Well, yeah. they went up in the elevator, and then they're like suddenly in his room, and I didn't even know whose room they were in because. Yes. <laughs> He's just and on a balcony. Is there a balcony in the elevator? Was, was a transition item, like a little dot in well, between. Even to say, like, one, one, a couple words in front of the line, like, you know, I'm Next, out, out of the car. And then, I'm yeah. out of the car and in the house, finally sitting in the living room. Like, I don't know, but I was like, I had to stop it and then look at my Kindle and be like, did I, yeah. did I, wait, I missed well, things. I, had, I read a couple people, like, parts like two or three times. I'm like, Yeah, oh. that's what I did. Well, okay, and then. I think it's a little more jarring because it's not every transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like sometimes it goes really smoothly and then yeah. all of a sudden you jump yeah, so it wasn't cons starting. like the transition yeah, chaos consistent. was not consistent. I think the biggest one was when Poppy was like, hey, like basically, hey, bitch, get in the car. And then we realized she's in Vancouver and not yeah. in Miami. Which right. They're, they're far apart. Which supposedly she got there in three hours because she left at six in the morning and then she calls him and he misses the call at 915. I was like, that does not happen. It's a no, super not fast when you plane. go that way. Yeah. I don't. Isn't Vancouver? Yes. West. It's, yeah. There's is a lot longer leave. flight than that. Amber's yeah. right. It does make you feel like you missed a page or mm -hmm. a couple paragraphs, and it, um, you know, you're kind of especially jarring in the audio. Like in the audio, Not you're bad. kind of like, did I did I miss? What did I miss? Wait, stop. Yeah. And then it's still happening. Um, Sue said she thinks is was it kind of taken out for editing, and I do not think so. I, I venture to guess this author might not actually use an editor because <laughs> there were a couple moments because I was like, huh, I don't know. Let's look. Like the lack of you know definition on what kind of racing, like yeah, there were just a couple things that if you were using you know, a dev editor or even a really quality beta reader, they would have come back and said, hey, I need more understanding or more definition on. Um, oh, there's a beta reader, a copy editor, a proofreader. Okay. A content editor. Really? All those things. 
And they just kind of let that go. Well, I mean, you can make all the suggestions you want. And sometimes authors just choose not to take yeah. them. This is also true. But um, Okay. How did you think about Ryan? He was age five. Who? Colin. Colin. <laughs> I'm going to change it. I think he was, I think he was age appropriate. Mm -hmm. Do you think he I was do. age appropriate? I do. I do. Yeah. Okay. So she gets points for that. Um, do you think that Cash's turn with how he was, like this enemies to lovers, like he was really kind of jerky and arrogant to her. And the next thing we know, he's making big, grand, sweeping, swoony gestures. Coming to the club to get her out. He shows up at the red carpet. He shows up at her apartment in Vancouver. Like, do you feel that those were quick? in his transition, his character arc? Or did it make sense the way it was plotted and paced out? I think it was hard to tell how much they were communicating. So I feel like how much time they're on, like they're on the phone every night and they're talking to each other. Mm -hmm. How much are they talking to each other? Does that make sense? Like how, yeah. is, like how long are the conversations? Yeah, and what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Like we yeah. miss a lot of like the nuances of how their relationship is progressing. But I think with when you see him with Cullen and how he treats Cullen and how he treats his mom, those like big moments aren't surprising because he really goes all out for the people he cares for. So I think if we had gotten more of like the text conversations, like between the two of them, like even like a couple like chapter beginnings like just text conversations that like where it wasn't like bantery or it wasn't like silly stuff like it would have seemed more not out of character because i was not completely sold on their hata yeah but it I, makes sense though, think I this think, comes down time. to the third act breakup i felt like the That's conflict fair. I like a third act breakup. I want the emotions. This felt forced. Like she had to do something. I don't think the breakup felt forced, but I think the way they came back together was not enough for me. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. Like I dude agree. should have like apologized. Like he fucked up and like she's the one who like had to text him back. Like, yes, he texted her and she ignored it, but like he should have made the effort to like go see her more grand yeah. gestures like just showing yeah. up yeah. at her play wasn't grand enough no or and it's running like running down the her... street like dude yeah. that was, <laughs> like could that happen in manhattan though, okay even? it could but it had cringy nora efron 90s rom-com yeah. vibes yeah like as like i'm picturing this like especially like at the time of day this supposedly happened i don't didn't see it actually happening yeah i like I said, it had that cringe. I like Nora Ephron movies. I like those 80s, 90s rom-coms. I mean, who does? But this just felt cringy. Like, yeah, I didn't I didn't feel like she should have been the one like that reached out after the breakup. Like, yes, he texted and she ignored it. But I still think he should have been the one that bridged that gap because he was an asshole in that moment, which you understood it. But at the same time, like. It was frustrating. Um, Amanda, did you have problems with the third act breakup? I know you're not a huge fan of them. I didn't I didn't mind their breakup so much because I mean I can see after, you know, he was in the accident and you know, he's trying to also the fact, you know, that she's a team owner and that if he tells her what's really going on, that he might lose his spot. So mm -hmm. that felt real and accurate to me. And I could understand why he was being the way he was being and you know why she just wasn't gonna put up with it. You know, she's at this point in her character evolution that she's just tired of putting up with that kind of stuff. But yeah, I didn't buy the, the way they got back together. Like, uh, like you said, it felt just very, it just felt lackluster. Mm -hmm. And I think that we could have had, I think that fire, the catastrophe of that crash was enough of a dramatic moment. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that we needed them to be separate. Well, but even if they separated like and she left but like came back the next day or something like that because like I mean in those moments like you're gonna be emotionally distraught like as you're dealing with like healing and being hovered over I thought the timeline of the breakup was too much it should have been just like a fight 
or something like that. The fact that it was like well, weeks. And he recovered really damn quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like the next week, right? The next week right? he was racing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you have supposed nerve work. damage, you would not be allowed to be getting back in your car. Well, I you mean, it is a like, book. It's not yeah. like, for real, yes, right? but still, <laughs> but still. Um, what yeah, about? I you? think it just felt like everything else. It just felt very quick. Like the yes. pacing was just yes. like everything was happening kind of quick. I will say the pacing of this book was quick. The reading of this book, uh -huh. even listening to it on regular speed, was fast, and I really didn't have any issues with that. I like that it. The story was enough of a story, even with the transitions, the writings, and an asshole the move the pacing of this book moved really quick and i listened to it in a day like and yeah. it's usually taking me two to three days to get through a book right now like i got through this one no problem mm -hmm. um heather what were your thoughts on the third act breakup because i know that you aren't necessarily a huge fan of them either i'm not a huge fan i did not get past the breakup because my family interrupted my reading today which is oh. very annoying those so, assholes they were one was gone and was supposed to be out of town and then decided to just come home and not tell anyone. Oh, good times. Whatever. So I, I don't, I'm interested to read how to finish because I'm almost to the end. I'm interested to figure out like, cause I don't like a third grad breakup. Yeah. Like I don't like drama just for drama. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Update us. Update us. Okay. Let us know. Yeah. Well, I'll text you guys. Um, okay. So Another question that I have real quick is I read the epilogue. And again, we talked about Terpity's, her quick change over to being, you know, I don't hate you. You're a great step person in my child's life. Yeah. Um, okay. But I read the epilogue. Thoughts on the epilogue. First of all, how pregnant are you that all of a sudden your wedding dress doesn't fit? That you didn't know it's... weeks before that you weren't like, oh, I'm really freaking bloated. I should see a seamstress. Like, well, who doesn't try their wedding dress on at least the week of the wedding to make sure there's nothing major? Like, maybe you need extra boob tape or something. Yeah, it didn't seem realistic. Because your boobs do not grow that, that fast, that well, early. I don't know. So. <laughs> okay, but did you at least try your wedding? Did you wait till the day of your wedding to put your wedding dress on after you had like had it at final fitting? No, no, I. I, remember. I, I think I mean, it's was, been a minute. I don't know if I did it the week of. I mean, yeah, I think it was. It was close. I, I tried remember. it on like the week of, and it was too long, and I was flipping out because it was too long. I do know the second time around. That's the only reason I knew I was pregnant was my boobs. But that's that the like, second time. The first time right. it is not like that. Uh, it's well, or the first time around. I didn't notice the first time around. Other people did. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on like I took it as her like stomach, not like because it was like uh -huh, a corset I did too. type thing. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't just pop. I did I mean, like his does, little laugh, be, like, but way it. Later. There would have, she would have, like, dude. Known. I was peeking three times a day, nothing was growing. The, I did like his line about he wasn't prepared for that night to have to undo all those buttons. Oh, yeah, I, and then I do like how he laced it up with his with his racing yeah, shoe yeah. lace, yes, yeah. or sash or whatever Stacey it was. Agrees. That was cute. She likes the ribbon being the racing laces, yeah. yeah. Okay, so is there anything else about uh, when I had you by SL Scott you guys want to talk about? I did like the mom. In his this, mom. Yes. Like mm -hmm. his mom. I agree. I really liked her too. Like and she I actually was a liked really good her character. parents. Her mom. I did too. Yes. Her yeah. parents. And that was one thing too. Like he didn't have, like his dad was not in the picture, but like his mom, like, yes, she struggled because she was a single mom, but she was good. Like her family was good. Like we didn't have, like the ex. Or honestly, the ex like... wasn't even that bad. She was just kind of selfish. So like that was one thing too. There was no like horribly bad relationship trauma in this, which I liked. Especially like, cause sometimes like with the single parent or even like really any romance, like the chances of both sides having good parents is rare. Yeah. Or orphan syndrome. Like usually mm -hmm. somebody has 
Somebody's been Disneyed. Yeah. Somebody's been Disneyed. Um, I do like how she made us really want the brothers books. Like that's. Yeah. To go back. I want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Poppy. Like I'm there for that. I did love the one sister-in-law that was like, well, you're coming home a little early in last night's clothes. Like totally (laughs) calls her out. I really like better do a better job of sneaking around or yeah. whatever. That was yeah. I was well, even like the there. sister-in-laws, like when they were in the pool and they were talking about it, and they're like, "Well, maybe you were wrong too." Yeah. Um. Okay. So here we go. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Uh, Jenny. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Oh. Okay. We'll go to you. Oh, thumbs up. Heather. Thumbs up. I would thumbs down. Try it again. Thumbs yeah, up. Thumbs like down. It. Amanda. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Um, I would I would say thumbs up. Yeah. Leah, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'd give it a thumbs up, like not like a high thumbs yeah. up, but I would definitely read her again to give her another I'm thumb sideways, like I'm not up or down. Like I'm just like it's it was good. I'm tilting to the top though. Yeah, <laughs> you're like a, you're like a, eh. Eh. <laughs> it was okay. The pacing worked for me. It was quick mm-hmm. quick. I will say it wasn't it wasn't as good as I was expecting based on what we like Except heard about. Except it, it was better than the ones that we have been reading that are all vibes. Like at least this yeah. one had some There weren't vibes, yeah. Had some context and content that you could some emotion that we could latch onto and I think really it mm-hmm. basically cuz it's had a third act breakup. Had it not had a third act breakup, I probably would have been like <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, but will you go back and read S.L. Scott? Just and everyone think yeah. I would give I will her probably give try. her one more try yeah. to see if because I'm not thrilled at like the way the transitions and all that stuff worked, and it was so I didn't love her writing style in that sense. But like the verbiage itself was pretty strong and stuff like that. So. Yeah, Amanda, you tried again. Yeah, and I think mainly because it was such a quick read. That mm-hmm. I would go back and read the brothers, or I would read Poppy because I feel like I could get through it really quick and figure yeah. out whether or not it was for me. Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay, if people liked when I had you, what other books would you recommend for them to try? Uh, so Amanda, what do you got? The only one I had before we talked was Drake by Sawyer Bennett. Yeah, because the, the energies an match. Asshole. The energies match. <laughs> yeah. So Drake is a bigger asshole. He is, but he's uh-huh. he's he's delightful uh, though. Yeah. Um, Leah, what do you got? Give me one or two. Um, Nanny and the Hothead by Krista Sandor. He is such a dick and an asshole, and he uh, it takes a lot for him to come back from that. It does. And then Catherine Cowles. We talked about Wrecked Palace. He's right up there. Yeah um heather what do you got i don't really have i mean i think maybe stone from sawyer bennett is a really big asshole at first yeah he's kind of an asshole he really takes a lot to come back to well those early books in that whole series i mean you get baden and then you go into stone and gauge is okay and then you get to cohen and you're like what the hell lady it's true that's that's serious and then drake I mean, they're all assholes, so many. but we love them all. Was, was Sawyer going through something? <laughs> she might have been. Um, Jenny, what do you recommend? Um, I feel like I've recommended this a lot lately, but Cambria Herbert's Gear Shark series is a racing world, um, and they kind of deal with the like paparazzi stuff, and so there's a lot of the same feels around that type of thing instead of somebody being an asshole and i do think we have an episode september ish that we're going to give race car wrecks to uh because jc burton in her sports series has a couple race car drivers that are pretty Mm -hmm. it's pretty decent books um i had adrift by swatty mh because he's kind of a jerk in the beginning um and it's single dad the tryst by lauren blakely Mm -hmm. again uh he's a single dad but she's it's also her ex's dad uh mm-hmm. the invitation by vi keelan he's mean at that he's wedding mean. reception like he's not an oh. asshole he is mean he, yeah i guess so he is kind of mean but that has so, some of the same vibes yeah. like you know it does but better but better um yeah. to hate adam connor by ella mays 
Yeah. He's jerky to her. her too. He like tries to get like, her arrested. She... Yeah, but she like she holds her own. She does. She does. She's kind of an asshole too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Dr. Heartless by Jay Salmon. Again, he's kind of I mean, they have that one night stand and then he's kind of mean to her through Oh yeah. The second part of the book. Well, dude uh, lies to her about which twin he is too. <laughs> Love Me Today by A.L. Jackson. I think if he hadn't had Paisley as his daughter, I don't think that that mm-hmm. book would have been. Or is Paisley the heroine? As dynamic as a Whatever the, the little girl's name is, if he hadn't had her, I think that you would have just hated him through that whole book. Um, and I, mean, I didn't really love him for most of the book anyway. So. Who's Your Daddy by Lauren Rowe. He's kind of a jerk. It's a neighbor situation. And The Devil in Blue Jeans by Stacey Kennedy. He's just mean to the heroine because she bought his bar that he yeah. sold by choice. Oh, well, but apparently Featherbow is on the moose, Will. We did forget to mention that Cash is, says good girl several times. He does. Yeah, she, is, like, she is a good girl for him. If you like a good girl, then you're going to like yeah. that. Well, and Sebastian York saying good girl in my ears is, you know... <laughs> Just not enough. a terrible day. No, it's no. a hardship, right? <laughs> Might flood the basement. Ew. I saw Hannah put that in a chat this cool. week, and I was like, I just need to find a way to say that in something now. Uh, Lisa, we need to do a bingo. Uh, we need bingo never, cards. Ever say that again? Like, ever. <laughs> oh my gosh! Han- it's Hannah's fault. I oh, believe it. it. You, the words came out of your mouth, though. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, we've gone far off the rails now. Yep. Yeah, that's bad. It wasn't bad. That was bad. We just need <laughs> it's to, like we laughing just need like she's 12. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um okay so make sure you join us sunday for our next episode we'll be here at 9 p.m sunday evening um i don't remember what we're talking about but we're talking, we're about, talking about where we're taking the top 20 of amazon and giving our own ricks yeah we're gonna that's right we're hyping up book books that we think need more hype um or if you liked this book read these books kind of thing um, and then next Wednesday, we are back with Fake Love by Jocelyn Soto. It is a fake relationship baseball romance. Um, Amanda, have you read this one already? No, I was saving it until right before. So I don't forget what happens. <laughs> well, some of them I know I made you pull quotes on and I didn't know. No, not done. that one yet. I, I waited when I found out we were possibly going to do it for the this month. I waited. Okay. So. Um, I have read it. Caveat, I do do work with Jocelyn, and I did work on this book. Um, But, yeah, it's... I'm excited. I think you all will like it. Um, Okay. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us and talking about When I Had You by S.L. Scott. It's always a good time. Yeah, Mm -hmm. this is fun. Super fun. (laughs) Until next time, everybody. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 